Hello Mishpacha, it's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother, and I am here today to share with you my TBR for the month of June, um, so the books that I am planning to read next month. So I have 12 books on the list, and the first of them is the only one I do not have a physical copy of. It is Conjure Women by Afia Atakora, um, and this is actually a book that I'm reading for a virtual book club that's just been started by um, Lindsay. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, um, it's a multi-generational novel set during the antebellum period. Um, and that's pretty much all I know about it so far. So I guess we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, the first sentence of it I have pulled up on my laptop. Um, so the, the opening of the novel reads as follows. By the way, this, is, this says that it's set in 1867. The black baby's crying wormed and bloomed. It woke Rue by halves from her sleep so that through the first few strains of the sound, she could not be sure when or where she was. But soon the feeble cry strengthened like a desperate knocking at her front door and she came all the way awake and knew that she was needed again. Um, so yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure this is a debut novel, so um, I'm looking forward to reading that and, and seeing what I think of it. Um, the next book I want to read in June is The Death of um, Ivan Ilyich by uh, Leo Tolstoy. This is just a slim little novella, and it's one that I've owned for a really long time. So this is one of those, it's on my physical TBR and I want to read it and um, cross it off of my physical TBR books. Um, but you know, Tolstoy is, is really a, a masterful observer of, of human nature, so I think this should be good. Um, it says on the back, Hailed as one of the world's supreme masterpieces on the subject of death and dying, the death of Ivan Ilyich is the story of a worldly careerist, a high court judge who has never given the inevitability of his dying so much as a passing thought. But one day, death announces itself to him, and to his surprise, he is brought face to face with his own mortality. How, Tolstoy asked, does an unreflective man confront his one and only moment of truth? Um, so I think this will be good, if short. Uh, by the way, the translator for this is Lynn Solitarov, and I don't know that I've read any translated Russian fiction from her, so we'll see how I like it. Uh, the first sentence of this has a very lengthy introduction, is... In the large building house, in the, in the large building housing the law courts, during a recess in the Melvinsky proceedings, members of the court and the public prosecutor met in the office of Ivan Igorovich Shevek, where the conversation turned on the celebrated Krasov case. All right, so that is the death of Ivan Ilyich. Um, I'm also wanting to start reading in June Henry James's novel, The Portrait of a Lady. Um, I'm going to be buddy reading this with uh, one of my old friends from graduate school, Taylor, um, and this is a, this is a, a thick book. Uh, it's, I think, about, yeah, it's, it's over 600 pages long, so my guess is we're not going to finish it in June. It will probably spill over into July, and also I think it just depends once we start reading on, um, you know, what, what kind of the pacing is like and how quickly we're both able to read it and check in with one another, so I'm guessing this is probably going to take a good two months to finish, possibly less, but it's it's quite long. So anyway, but I'm looking forward to reading it because I've never read any Henry James except for a couple of short stories, um, and I'm, I'm glad to finally get around to reading one of his novels, even if it is uh, a chunkier one. <laughs> Um, the next book I want to read in June is James Baldwin's Notes of a Native Son, um, and I'm particularly excited about this for two reasons, well, three reasons. One, because it's James Baldwin, <laughs> um, but also because, uh, you know, Lindsay and I just finished our buddy read recently of, of Richard Wright's Native Son, so I figured this is the perfect time to revisit uh, James Baldwin's Notes of a Native Son, and I read a few essays from this um, for my comprehensive exams in graduate school, but I've never read the whole thing. Um, and also June is Pride Month, so again, what better time and excuse to read the amazing work of James Baldwin, who is a wonderful essayist. Um, so, oh, I forgot to read you the first line of Portrait of a Lady, so let me go back and then I'll read you the first line of this. 
Alright, so the first line of Portrait of a Lady is... This also has a lot of introductory material. Alright. Under certain circumstances, there are few hours in life more agreeable than the hour dedicated to the ceremony known as afternoon tea. Well, can't really disagree with that. <laughs> All right, so uh, Notes of a Native Son. So the first essay in this collection is uh, Everybody's Protest Novel, which I believe is about, I could be wrong. Yeah, it's about Uncle Tom's Cabin. That's what I thought. Okay, so the first line of this is, In Uncle Tom's Cabin, that cornerstone of American social protest fiction, St. Clair, the kindly master, remarks to his coldly disapproving Yankee cousin, Miss Ophelia, that, so far as he is able to tell, the blacks have been turned over to the devil for the benefit of the whites in this world. However, he adds thoughtfully, it may turn out in the next. So, yeah, so James Baldwin basically talks about a variety of different subjects uh, in this in this collection of essays, um, but again, he's always very insightful, um, very eloquent, great writer, um, and yeah, I really feel like he's someone who the phrase ahead of their time uh, definitely applies to. He's, he's very prophetic. I've, ne I've almost never read anything by him that I feel like cannot also be applied to present day circumstances. So yeah, really looking forward to this. Probably going to be the book I start first. <laughs> Um, also because it is Pride Month in June, um, I want to read A Lot, which is a collection of short stories by Brian Washington. So this is a, this is a fairly recent publication. I think it came out last year. Um, and Brian Washington actually is set to, um, come out with his first novel in, I believe, October of this year. So if I like the short stories, I'll probably check out the novel too. Um, so here's the description. Around him, others... Oh, okay, in the city of Houston, a sprawling, diverse microcosm of America, the son of a black mother and a Latino father is coming of age. He's working at his family's restaurant, weathering his brother's blows, resenting his older sister's absence, and discovering he likes boys. Around him, others live, in, live and thrive and die in Houston's myriad neighborhoods. A young woman whose affair detonates across an apartment complex, a ragtag baseball team, a group of young hustlers, Hurricane survivors, a local drug dealer who takes a Guatemalan teen under his wing, a reluctant chupacabra. I wonder what a reluctant chupacabra is. <laughs> Brian Washington's brilliant, viscerally drawn world vibrates with energy, wit, and the infinite longing of people searching for home, with uh, soulful insight into what makes a community, a family, and a life. Lot explores trust and love in all its unsparing and unsteady forms. Um, so this is the first line of the first short story, which is entitled Lockwood. Robert, Roberto was brown and his people lived next door, so of course I went over on weekends. Alright, I'm looking forward to this. Um, next book I want to read, also uh, partially a pick for Pride Month, is the Crunk Feminist Collection, which was co-authored by one of my dissertation committee members, Susanna Morris. Um, so the Crunk Feminist Collection was written by the members of the Crunk Feminist Collective, who are all um, black women who, um, you know, are, are very, in terms of their research, feminist, intersectional, um, and uh, yeah, and they also talk a lot about um, they also talk a lot about hip hop um, in their in their work. So this is a collection of, of nonfiction essays by the members of the Crunk Feminist Collective. So this is actually from the Crunk Feminist Collective mission statement. The Crunk Feminist Collective will create a space of support and camaraderie for hip-hop generation feminists of color, queer and straight, with and within the academy and without, by building a rhetorical community in which we can discuss our ideas, express our crunk feminist selves, fellowship with one another, debate and challenge one another, and support each other as we struggle together to articulate our feminist goals, ideas, visions, and dreams in ways that are both personally and professionally beneficial. So that sounds awesome, right? Um, so I've actually owned this book for 
several years now. I bought it shortly after it was first released and I started reading it, but then I never finished it, so I'm looking forward to actually finishing it. Um, the next book I want to read in the month of June is, I'm actually reading a good number of my uh, birthday books this month. Um, so I want to read Louise Erdrich's novel, Tracks. Um, so this is set in North Dakota at a time in the past century when Indian tribes were struggling to keep what little remained of their lands. Tracks is a tale of passion and deep unrest. Over the course of ten crucial years, as tribal land and trust between people erode ceaselessly, men and women are pushed to the brink of their endurance, yet their pride and humor prohibit surrender. The reader will experience shock and pleasure in encountering characters that are compelling and rich in their vigor, clarity, and indomitable vitality. Um, so, the first line of this is... We started dying before the snow, and like the snow, we continued to fall. Very poetic, I like that. Um, I also want to read N. Scott Mamaday's House Made of Dawn, and I said this in my um, video where I hauled my birthday books, um, but N. Scott Mamaday basically originated the Native American Renaissance in fiction. Um, this book was published in, I believe, 1969 or 1968, and it won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, so... Yeah, so it's, uh, so the description says, A young Native American, Abel, has come home to New Mexico from war to find himself caught between two worlds. The first is the world of his grandfather's, wedding him to the rhythm of the seasons, the harsh beauty of the land, and the ancient rites and traditions of his people. But the other world, modern industrial America, pulls at Abel, demanding his loyalty, claiming his soul, and goading him into a destructive compulsive cycle of depravity and despair. Um, so the first line of this novel is... The river lies in a valley of hills and fields. The north end of the valley is narrow and the river runs down from the mountains through a canyon. So looking forward to getting to that since I've never read anything by N. Scott Mamaday before. Um, I also want to read in June Carol Anderson's book White Rage. I read White Fragility in April and I really thought it was great. Um, and so now I would like to read White Rage, which was the book, um, which was a book that was published a year or two before White Fragility and also kind of explores the same subject of why um, it's so hard for white people to accept and own our own racism um, and own up to it. Um, and I, I think especially with everything that's happened recently with the, the murder of George Floyd and the situation with... Um, Amy Cooper in New York with the dog. Um, definitely, this is a this will, will be a timely read for me. Um, so the description of this says: Since 1865, in the passage of the Thirteenth Amendment, every time African Americans have made advances toward full participation in our democracy, white reaction has fueled a deliberate, relentless rollback of any gains. Carefully linking historical flashpoints from the post-Civil War black codes to expression of white rage after the election of America's first black president, Anderson renders visible the long lineage of white rage and the different names under which it hides. Compelling and dramatic in the unimpeachable history it relates, white rage adds a vital new dimension to the national conversation about race in America. Um, so, the opening line of this is... Although I first wrote about white rage in a Washington Post op-ed following the killing of Michael Brown and the subsequent uprising in Ferguson, Missouri, the concept, start, the concept started to germinate much earlier. Um, and as we can see from recent events, the concept continues to be relevant um, and persist. Uh, I also want to read in the month of June Zadie Smith's novel, White Teeth. Um, I don't really know anything about it except that I know it's supposed to be funny. Uh, so here's what it says. One of the most talked about fictional debuts of recent years, White Teeth, is a funny, generous, big-hearted novel adored by readers and critics alike. Dealing with, among many other things, friendship, love, war, three cultures and three families over three generations, and the tricky way the past has of coming back and biting you on the ankle, it is a life-affirming, riotous must-read of a book. 
Um, so, first line of this is... By the way, chapter one is entitled, The Peculiar Second Marriage of Archie Jones. Early in the morning, late in the century, Crinklewood Broadway. At 0627 hours, okay, 0627 hours. On January 1st, 1975, Alfred Archibald Jones was dressed in corduroy and sat in a fume-filled Cavalier Musketeer estate face down on the steering wheel, hoping the judgment would not be too heavy upon him. Interesting. Now I wonder what this judgment is and what his whole backstory is. So yes, I'm drawn in already. Okay, my books are falling because this is a really big pile. <laughs> okay. The next book I want to read is, uh, it was also part of my birthday haul, so this is Kathy Park Hong's um, nonfiction book, Minor Feelings and Asian American Reckoning. So, um, this says, poet and essayist Kathy Park Hong fearlessly and provocatively blends memoir, cultural criticism, and history to expose fresh truths about racialized consciousness in America, part memoir and part cu cultural criticism. This collection is vulnerable, humorous, and provocative, it's and it's relentless and riveting pursuit of vile questions around family and friendship, art and politics, identity and individuality, will change the way you think about our work. So, first line of this is... My depression began with an imaginary tick. Again, I'm sort of intrigued already and want to keep reading, so. Um, and then the last book I want to read in the month of June is Daniel Silva's The Confessor. So this is the third book in the Gabriel Alon series that follows uh, an ex-Mossad agent who is an art restorer by trade but keeps getting drawn back into assignments for um, Ari Shamron, a.k.a. a thinly veiled Ariel Sharon, <laughs> um, and The Office. Um... So, I don't, this is a, this was like an advanced manuscript at the time that I uh, got a hold of it. I've had this for a number of years now, um, so it does not actually have a description of the book on it, um, but I'll just go ahead and read you the first sentence just for fun. Okay, Munich. The apartment house at Adelbert Strauss 68 was one of the few in the fashionable district of Schwabing, yet to be overrun by Munich's noisy and growing professional elite. All right, so those are the 12 books I would like to read in the month of June. Um, let me know what you're planning to read in June, if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned or are interested in reading them, especially if you read them and you liked them. Let me know down in the comments. Um, I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you are all doing good reading. And until my Friday Reads video, would it kill you to call your mother?